tonight, a shock summer election after a day of intense political speculation. Rishi Sunak announces we're going to the polls on July the 4th. Now is the moment for Britain to choose its future, to decide whether we want to build on the progress we have made or risk going back to square one with no plan and no certainty. We'll have reaction from Westminster and look at where the battle lines will be drawn here in Scotland. You know, the Conservatives face a really uphill struggle here. On average, they're more than 20 points behind um, in the opinion polls. Also making the headlines, the First Minister announces a multi-million pound plan to expand childcare as part of his drive to eradicate child poverty. And tonight's sport comes from Hamden as teenager Ben Doak is included in Scotland's provisional squad for the Euros. I'm Gordon Cree in Edinburgh. And I'm Kellyanne Woodland in Glasgow. This is the STV News at six. Good evening. The Prime Minister has just fired the starting gun for a summer general election. Within the last hour, Rishi Sunak surprised the country with an announcement that the UK will go to the polls on July the 4th. Mr Sunak said he was ready to fight for every vote and indeed polling experts say he may well have to. Our Westminster correspondent Paris Gertzianis is in Downing Street now. Paris, the race is on. The race is on and it's a sprint, six weeks until the country decides. Today it was decision time for Rishi Sunak and he faced an impossible choice. Launch an election campaign in some of the toughest conditions for a sitting government in living memory or wait, potentially for things to get worse. Westminster was consumed by rumour throughout the day as ministerial visits were cancelled and cabinet was summoned here to Downing Street. And within the past hour, under drenching rain and the sound of protest echoing, the Prime Minister said he was the man to take tough decisions. He'd done it on COVID and on the economy. His decision today faced the people now. The question now is how and who do you trust to turn that foundation into a secure future for you, your family and our country? Now is the moment for Britain to choose its future to decide whether we want to build on the progress we have made or risk going back to square one with no plan and no certainty. Earlier today, I spoke with His Majesty the King to request the dissolution of Parliament. The King has granted this request and we will have a general election on the 4th of July. This is going to be a campaign across the UK where voters are asked, after 14 years of Conservative government at Westminster and 17 years of SNP dominance in Scotland, do you want to stick or twist? It's a fight to survive for the Tories, but also for the SNP. Their position at the summit of Scottish politics is going to be challenged as never before. That's a fight they've never faced, and many of the party can not remember a time when their position has been worse. For Labour and Keir Starmer, this is a golden opportunity, their best chance to retake power at Westminster and avenge their wipeout by the SNP nearly a decade ago. If they fail, if the Tories manage to beat the odds, it will be a great escape to rival anything in British political history. A moment the country needs and has been waiting for. And where, by the force of our democracy, power returns to you. A chance to change for the better your future, your community, your country. Whichever party wins, whichever man walks through the door of number 10 Downing Street, they will inherit huge challenges, global threats and public services that in Scotland and across the UK are under huge pressure. It's been said before, but it's never been truer than now. There is no money left. And with no money for tax cuts, that may be why Rishi Sunak decided now was as good as time as any. So the stage is set. But can any of the actors inspire enthusiasm among the audience? That's the public at home. A busy few weeks ahead for you, Paris, for now. Thank you. Well, today's announcement also came as something of a surprise to politicians here in Scotland. Let's cross straight over now to Hollywood and our political editor, Colin Mackay. So, Colin, a bolt from the blues today, as it were.
Maybe, but there was no blue skies over Downing Street today. He was absolutely drook it during that statement. Instead of things can only get better in the background, they should maybe have had, um, why does it always rain on me? But this is going to be a very different election, general election to the 2019 one that we saw in Scotland. For a start, Scotland will only send 57 MPs to Westminster after, rather than 59. And the constituency boundaries have been largely uh, redrawn as well. But this election, crucially, will come during the school holidays in Scotland, and that is an absolutely huge deal. A lot of voters will actually be away on holiday at the start of July. Schools will have closed for the summer and will have to reopen for polling. Staff who work in councils in Scotland, who man the polling stations and count the votes, many of them will be away on holiday. And it also happens to fall during the Euros. Now, the 4th of July, election day, is actually a rest day in the tournament. It's also also in the second round, so there's no guarantee that Scottish fans will still be in Germany at that point. But there will be plenty of games in the run-up to the election. And I think what you'll have to find is that on the game days, there's going to have to be rest days for the campaign, because no one is going to want to be watching the football and having someone knocking on their door, interrupting, asking for their vote. But some of the people who will be asking for that, those votes are the Scottish political leaders. Here's their reaction. I'm delighted to be fighting an election. I'm fresh into the party leadership. Uh, we're clear, clearly seeing the benefits of having fresh leadership in the SNP. And we've got a clear message. And our message is this, that we have an opportunity now to get rid of a discredited Conservative government and put Scotland first. And that's going to be the SNP message. We're finally getting the general election this country is desperate for because people are crying out for change. And we finally have an opportunity after 14 years of Tory chaos and failure to deliver that change. That's why come this election, we need to encourage people to vote Scottish Labour, to boot out the Tories, to maximise Scotland's influence and deliver the change Scotland needs. It's time for change. Labour's ready to deliver it. The Scottish Conservatives are ready in this election to take the fight to the SNP and beat the Nationalists in key seats right across Scotland. We have uh, an opportunity now to end their obsession with independence and get the focus back onto priorities people have up and down the country. Now, the Prime Minister said that the election would be in the second half of the year. Technically, he's right. July is just the second half of the year. Now, inflation came down a bit today. It's still not meeting his 2% target. Families are still suffering from the cost of living crisis, food and energy bill inflation and high mortgage rates. So calling an election for July rather than in the autumn, as was expected, suggests that it doesn't look like things are going to get much better later in the year. There's clearly no prospects of tax cuts from the Conservative government. So I think they'd be left hoping for a miracle to change things for the end of the year, which is why he's going now. But the opinion polls suggest that... It could take a miracle for the Conservatives to overturn a massive Labour lead. The gulf is just so big. And here is a pollster, Mark Diffley, to explain it. The Conservatives face a really uphill struggle here. On average, they're more than 20 points behind um, in the opinion polls. His personal favourability ratings are, are low. And the economic situation, while there are some kind of signs of recovery, um, there's not a huge amount of evidence that that has fed through into either you know, optimism amongst the public about their own finances or the economy. And these are the people that count, the public, the voters, because it's them that are going to have their say. Let's hear what some in Glasgow had to say earlier. I think it's about time, to be honest with you. Uh, as much as they may have done good through COVID times, I think it's time we need to get a, a fresh set of eyes on things and get the country moving again because it is suffering. What's a fresh start to you? Fresh start is to look, look at the finances and look at how they're actually dishing out the finances across all the, the areas that, like education, health. The sooner the Conservatives and the SNP get booted out the better. Well I think the SNP will put in a really good performance. I think the Tories will get uh, hunted out of Scotland as they should be, mired in corruption and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, I think the Labour Party will do fairly well, but not as well as they think they will. And there's a bit of analysis there. I think Labour are probably the party in Scotland who's most looking forward to this election. I think the SNP are possibly looking forward to it a little bit more with John Swinney as the leader. 
than they were with Hamza Yusuf because he is polling slightly better. But realistically, you know, it's going to be difficult for everyone to get much excitement during this campaign. A very difficult time with a lot going on. All right, Colin, thanks very much for that. And we'll hear more from Colin at the end of the programme. Well, to Scottish politics now, and where the First Minister has announced a multi-million pound plan to expand childcare as part of his drive to eradicate child poverty. John Swinney set out the four key priorities for his government. As he told MSPs, he wants to bring Parliament together. However, opposition parties claim the First Minister is repeating old promises, which the Scottish Government will break once again. Our political correspondent Ewan Petrie reports. This charity supports more than 350 families each year. It offers a welcoming space for parents and carers and help for those struggling with rising costs. Mel had hoped to return to work after quitting her job to have children, but can only afford two days childcare. I kind of think about where I, my career would have been at this point and think that, um, yeah, it's going to take me a while to kind of catch up. Um, but it's just the balance right now. Um, I would love to be able to work part time and still look after my family, but it's just not possible. Charities like this will be crucial to the First Minister's central aim of eradicating child poverty. What we really need to see is longer term, more sustainable funding. Funding is very, very challenging at the moment. So for us to be able to provide the support that the families so desperately need, we really need that sustainable funding. John Swinney set out his four priorities at Holyrood. They include growing the economy, tackling the climate emergency and improving public services. He also announced cash for childcare. Over the next two years, we will invest £16 million to tackle poverty and help families by expanding access to childcare services with six early adopter community projects. This investment will support low-income families to enter and sustain employment, with funding targeted at those who are most at risk of living in poverty. Opposition parties accused the First Minister of being the ultimate continuity candidate, offering more of the same and failing to focus on the country's real priorities. Ewan Petrie, STV News. The former post office boss repeatedly broke down in tears and apologised to the victims of the Horizon IT scandal at the inquiry into the affair today. Paula Venels became emotional and said she regretted referring to postmasters' complaints as noise. 900 sub-postmasters, around 60 of them in Scotland, were prosecuted because of failures in the faulty IT system between 1999 and 2015. She denied there was a conspiracy to cover it up. Our political reporter Laura Alderman's report contains flash photography. Ms. Venos, did you lie to MPs? This was the moment wrongly convicted sub-postmasters have waited years for. Paula Venels, the post office boss during the last few years of the Horizon IT scandal, arrived to give evidence at the inquiry in London this morning. I swear by almighty God. And she began with an apology. How sorry I am for all that sub-postmasters and their families and others have suffered. Today is the first time in nearly a decade she's spoken publicly about her involvement in the scandal, in which hundreds of sub-postmasters were fined or jailed over accounting shortfalls that were actually the fault of the Horizon IT system. They're not calling me a thief. Their ordeal was featured in the STV drama Mr Bates versus the Post Office, the success of which has galvanised the public. Today, Miss Venels was repeatedly pressed on if and when she knew about bugs in the IT system. The post office knew that. I completely accepted. Personally, I didn't know that. And I'm incredibly sorry that ha that, that happened to those people and to so many others. For Louise, it's all too little, too late. The former sub-postmistress was forced to pay back £44,000 after she says faulty data flagged shortfalls at her branch in Lindsay. It seemed to me like a bit of a script. Suddenly, oh, it's such a long time ago, I don't remember. And people need to be actually answering questions as they should be with full 100% honesty. It's, it's disappointing that we're still feeling that 
the whole truth is not being told. Miss Venels will continue giving evidence tomorrow, while those who lost their livelihoods and so much more will be watching and waiting for justice. Laura Alderman, STV News. Taxi drivers have launched a last-minute appeal to Glasgow City Council to avoid an estimated 350 vehicles being taken off the road as part of the low emission zone enforcement. They say it would be folly to allow the cars to cease trading and are urging a reprieve until they are compliant. It comes as the figures show over a million pounds in fines have been handed out since the zone came into force. Holly Dickinson has more. Hailing a cab to get from A to B is something most of us in Glasgow have done before, but it could be about to become much harder. That's because an estimated 350 taxis, which had had an extension to comply with the city's low emissions zone, have run out of time. And on June the 1st, the warning is they'll disappear from our streets. Glasgow's a vibrant town full of good restaurants, good entertainment, music venues, and taxis are an integral part of that. All these other businesses will really suffer badly if these taxis go off the road. We're asking them to consider that to avoid putting 350 small businesses out of work at a key time for the city, when the city's businesses really need support, all of these small businesses form part of that solution, and the city is going to lose them imminently. The zone has been enforced since June last year. Since then, it's generated more than a million pounds in fines. Today, those in the city said losing more taxis would be a big blow. If you were kind of stranded in a strange place when you don't live in town, you would really be worried on how you would get home. That would be quite scary. Yeah, I think that's quite a big issue. So it makes me avoid the town more. It actually makes me avoid the town more. If there's less taxis, it does make you avoid the town more. I've often had nights out and ended up here and jumped in a taxi along there. So, yeah, if they weren't there, I don't know what I would do. And drivers we've spoken to say many have had enough. You know, just 350 guys. That's 350 businesses, small businesses in this city that are going to be lost to this, this city. And guys put on the scrap heap. Simple as that. That's where they're going. Bear in mind the average age of the, the taxi driver in this city is 58 years old. This is to buy cabs just now that will be compliant. They're overinflated, way, way overinflated. Not really fair because so many t I mean, taxi drivers going off-road because they can't afford. See the old people like over 50 or 60, they're not able to get the loan that much. The new tax is costing like 60,000. Nobody from Glasgow City Council was available for interview. They told STV News that eligible operators were also granted an exemption from the scheme's first year of operation. And we will show further flexibilities beyond this point, but only for operators who can show they are actively seeking to take steps to meet the cleaner LEZ standards. Ollie Dickinson, STV News, Glasgow. Well, time for sport and Raman is at Hampden on a big day for the national football team. Raman. Thanks very much, Kellyanne. A very good evening from Hamden. After weeks of speculation, we now know who's in Steve Clark's provisional 28-man squad for the Euros. And there's a first call-up for Liverpool teenager Ben Doak. The head coach says the forward has a lot of talent and will offer the team something different. Well, let's take a look at the squad. Clark has picked four goalkeepers, Xander Clark, Craig Gordon, Angus Gunn and Liam Kelly. On to the defenders. Uncapped Bristol City defender Ross McCrory has been included, as has Celtic right-back Anthony Ralston, with Clark's first-choice picks Aaron Hickey and Nathan Patterson ruled out through injury. Grant Hanley is also in the squad. Clark has picked eight midfielders. Ryan Jack, who missed the last Euros, is in. And Stuart Armstrong, who is currently injured, has a chance to prove his fitness by next month. And Ben Doak is one of five forwards named. Also included is James Forrest, a recall for the Celtic winger who last played for Scotland three years ago. Well, Clark will have to cut his 28-man squad to 26 players by June the 7th, meaning two players will miss out on the tournament. Here's Jamie Bothwick. Seven months on from confirming that Scotland are off to the Euros, Steve Clark delivered the 28 names in line to be in his squad, and one in particular jumped off the page. 
18-year-old Ben Doak has just a handful of appearances for Liverpool to his name. Now the teenager is set to be off to Germany. Well, Ben's got obviously a lot of, a lot of talent. He catches your eye. I, I think the pace would, would be something that we, we haven't got in abundance in the squad, so it's something a little bit different. The question now is whether the Scots can go and earn results at the major tournament. I think they're capable. I think it's a good group of players. Uh, obviously, our aim is to be as competitive as we can be in all the matches. I believe that if we play to our, the best of our abilities, then we could be the first Scottish team come out of the group stages. Alex McLeish managed Scotland in two separate spells and shares the current boss's belief that they can make an impression. We've got players playing at a really great level. You know, a lot of players in the English Premier League, you know, you get John McGinn, Andy Robertson there for starters, you know. Tierney was there and we Arsenal. And, and when you're playing in that league, you know, that's like the best league in the world. Scotland go into training camp next week ahead of friendlies with Gibraltar and Finland. And the squad must be cut from 28 to 26 in the first week of June. Five or six players that we've maybe got a little bit of doubt about. So let's see how the how the pre-camp pans out and then we'll take it from there. But ultimately, there's going to be two very difficult conversations. The good thing about it is it won't be a telephone call, it'll be a sit-down face-to-face and I'll just have to tell it like it is. Jamie Borthwick, STV News. Well, with Aaron Hickey and Nathan Patterson ruled out of the tournament, Anthony Ralston says he's ready to step up for his country if called upon. The Celtic defender has been speaking to Ronnie Charters. Tony, first of all, huge congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Your thoughts and emotions now that you're in that provisional squad for the Euros? I know, I'm, I'm buzzing. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's something as, you know, as a kid when you, you, you grow up watching these tournaments and you... Yeah, I idolise the people that are playing in them, so to now say that um, I'm involved in one is, is, is a bit surreal, so no, I'm absolutely delighted. In terms of the actual squad and the team, the right-back, right-wing-back position has been one that's been talked about a lot because of injuries to the likes of Hickey and Patterson. They've obviously not made it. How hungry are you to, to stake a claim for that spot in Germany? You know, if the opportunity arises um, over there and, and things like that, then yeah, I would love to you know, do my best for my country. That's my job uh, when I'm there um, and give my all for the team. Um, so, you know, from a personal point of view, I've kept myself in great condition and off the back of a game at the weekend there, um, 90 minutes. So I'm feeling good in myself and it's my job to do, to do it for my country if it's called upon and, and I'm ready to do so. Can you make it out of the group? Yeah, I'm more than capable. Like I said there, the talent we've got within the squad and what we've shown um, and our capabilities at at the highest level already um, supports that, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident um, as well, but again, it will just be down to us and, and the work that we put in. Well, Tony, we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very Congrats much. Congrats again and thanks for joining us on STV. Thank you. Well, some news away from the Euros and Kilmarnock manager Derek McInnes has signed a new deal until 2027. Well, that is all your sport from me tonight. On the day, Steve Clark named his provisional squad for the Euros. The tournament gets underway in just 23 days' time and Scotland will take centre stage in the opening game when they take on host Germany. The nation can't wait. Raman, thank you. Well, we saw the rain in Downing Street, but what's in store for the rest of us? Here's Sean. Light winds rolling in from the west will be joined by some very welcomed ice creams. TUI sponsors STV Weather. A very good evening to you. Look at that. Rain coming in from the east. What a day it's been out there today. Quite a change from what we've had recently. We've done pretty well over the last couple of weeks. Some warm, sunny days. We've had temperatures up to 25 degrees. 
Forget that just now, just a distant memory for the next few days. Plenty of rain around, mind you, in a few spots it saves us watering the old hanging baskets, window boxes at least. With that rain around just now, over the next few days, it does become a wee bit more showery though. Staying very wet out there through this evening and tonight, the rain turning a little bit more showery over inland parts, but uh, persistent heavy rain across the Hebrides through much of the night. Temperatures around 11 or 12 degrees, so it is mild out there. Now, tomorrow morning, we've still got the weather front over the top of us. A lot of cloud, there will be some showery outbreaks of rain, but I expect probably about midday. Lunchtime onwards, you'll start to see brighter colours appearing over Fife initially, and then we see those brighter colours drifting across lights of North Lanarkshire into South Lanarkshire, Glasgow, Renfrewshire and Dumbartonshire. So here, the rain will turn heavier once again during tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures about 13 to 15 degrees. So still a damp day to come tomorrow, but some heavy bursts of rain again returning to central areas. So wet tomorrow, sunshine and showers on Friday have popped some quite dark clouds in there, especially in the west around Glasgow and the Highlands and Bartonshire. Here the risk of some quite thundery showers on Friday, fewer showers around on Saturday and hopefully drier on Sunday too. Bye-bye. TUI sponsors STV Weather. Well, let's go back to our top story and our political editor. So, Colin, do you think all of the Scottish voters will be looking forward to this election campaign? I, I think probably many of them could see it far enough. It feels like we've had an election every year for umpteen years now. But basically, just in case you haven't had enough political drama over the, the last few weeks, welcome to the general election. Sunak, Starmer, Swinney, Ed Davey. I'm not sure quite how dramatic this election is going to be. I'm not sure that's the most exciting lineup. I'm not sure they're going to be able to set this election on fire and really excite the electorate. But that is what they're going to have to do over the next five weeks or so. This has been built throughout the last few months as a change election in so many different ways. But that change is now up to you, the voter. You'll have your say on July the 4th. Indeed, it's going to be a busy spill ahead. OK, thanks very much, Colin. Well, we'll have more on the election being called with Rona in Scotland tonight at 10 to 11, but that's all from us for now. Good night. Good night.